Hello and welcome to the Cranky Old Gamer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at One Deck Dungeon by Asmati Games. Uh, it was designed by Chris Seaslick. Something about me, uh, you guys may have noticed this, maybe not, I've talked about it. I am a sucker for a good solo game. Um, I've, I've touched on that quite a few times. My Fallout review, uh, you know, Tiny Epic Galaxy, stuff like that. I love a good solo game. So when I heard about One Deck Dungeon here, uh, it, it popped to the top of my radar. It was a very successful Kickstarter. The game came out, uh, I believe, last summer, 2017. So I had to get my hands on it. Uh, it now actually, it's been out so long that it has its first expansion, a standalone expansion, Forest of Shadows. Have not played that yet. Now, One Deck Dungeon is a one to two player game. So you, you can pair up with a friend, a significant other, makes a good couples game. Uh, but we're going to focus on the solo because that's mostly how the game is marketed. It is a dice game where you play a hero who is delving into a dungeon. Oh, is that where the name comes from? The game does its best to emulate a roguelike style game, which for those of you who are not aware, a roguelike is a genre of computer games that they're known for being random. Uh, you never know what you're going to find. Enemies spawn randomly. The dungeons spawn randomly. Uh, and they're also known for their brutal difficulty. In One Deck Dungeon, you are going to choose one of five heroes. You have an archer, a rogue, a mage, a warrior, and a paladin. You are then going to delve into the dungeon, which is usually three layers deep, to fight a boss monster. Uh, your dungeon is represented by this deck of cards right here. Uh, rather than try to describe it blindly, I want to show you guys how to play real quick. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, let's do a clock wipe and I'll show you how to play. Here we have the basic setup for one deck dungeon. You have your dungeon deck here. You will eventually, through gameplay, lay out four doors. I've chosen the Paladin Hero. Paladin Hero has five hit points, so I've given myself five cubes. And if you look here, you will see three swords, three yellow dice, one agility, one pink tie, three blue, three magic. You will also choose your difficulty level. Uh, this is the Dragon's Cave. This is the Beginners. Um, you will see these are the game rules that go into effect with each one of the floors. Floor 1, Floor 2, Floor 3. And as you go down, Floor 1 will always be in play. These just get added there. You're not going from one to another. You will always have your turn reference, which also doubles as your potions. And you're also going to have your level. When you're level one, you can only have one item, two skills, and you get one potion during setup. You have no hero dice. It's going to cost you seven experience to level up. All right, easy enough. How do you play? Well, you choose one. When it is your turn, you see this icon here? That is time. So you have to spend two time by discarding from the deck, there's your time, then you flip a card of your choice. Okay, we have found bear traps. I can choose either one of these. Do I want to disarm or run through? To disarm costs me three time, but it's an easier challenge. To run through them is a more difficult challenge, but it costs me nothing if I succeed. This is worth two experience, and if I win, I get an invisibility potion, or I can put this on my character and gain an extra agility. Here's how you do that. Watch this, super complicated. Ta-da! Look, now I have two boots. But let's say, with my dice, I only have this. That's not gonna get me very far unless I absolutely roll a six. I could, I could. But I can also back off and I can say, nope, next turn, I'm gonna flip this. Well, that's a locked door. This one requires eight of the pink dice, agility, or 11 strength dice. Did I get any monsters? Another trap, pit of spikes. 
Did I not draw any monsters? There we go. All right. We have a goblin. Swarm times x equals 4 per open door, including this one. So for this, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, no. I would have to roll 16 strength first because this has the shield icon. That's his armor. If I get that, then I can do any of these. Any of these that do not get filled by dice, this is the consequence. If I don't fill this one, I lose a hit point and a time. If I lose this one, I just lose one time. If I don't fill this one, I lose two hit points. That's basically it. Now, when you do roll your dice, you roll all of them, regardless of what you're rolling for. All right, so there's my, I have a pink five, I have a strength one, five, and three, and a magic of four, one, and one. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna fail that. I'm gonna fail that. So let's pick a different monster here. Let's say I'm fighting this phantom. Let's, uh, let's, let's pretend I have better dice, shall we? Just for demonstration's sake. All right, we'll say this, three of each. All right, so he has ethereal. So I have to immediately discard all ones and threes. Well, there goes most of my dice. That's what I'm left with. Just trying to give you an idea of the difficulty of this game. Once you get to the bottom of the, uh, the dungeon, and you face the dragon, and he's insanely difficult. And that's the basics on how to play one deck dungeon. So now you have a better idea of how to play one deck dungeon. So my thoughts on the game. This is a very popular game. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a hold of. It sells out very quickly. Uh, it has a very good reputation. I don't like it. Sorry, I don't like it. Um, it's not a bad game. I can see why people like it. I, the difficulty on this game is way too high. Even people that I have talked to that play it all the time, play it, I don't know I don't know that I've ever, maybe I have, but I don't think I've ever talked to anybody who has beaten the easy level dungeon. Um, I'm sure there's people on Board Game Geek and, you know, somewhere out on the internet that have, but of the people that I know that have played it, they can't even beat the easy level dungeon with the dragon. I have gotten to the dragon. I've gotten through all three levels of the dungeon to the dragon, and he promptly stomped on me. Let's see, Minotaur's Mage, Lich's Tomb, Hydra's Reef, Yeti's Cavern, Dragon's Den. Here we go. Let me show you what, you what happens on the Dragon's Den. I told you about the time mechanic. I hate the time mechanic. I hate that mechanic. If I, like, if I were ever to house rule this game, I would throw that mechanic right out the window. Um, it, it just, it drives me nuts that every little thing you do, and I, I, I get the mentality behind it. I, I understand that, you know, the monsters are coming for you and it keeps you from just farming. It keeps you from grinding, but that's what you do in a, in a lot of video games. Like if you're trying to emulate that experience, let me do that experience. And they're like, oh no, it's meant to represent, you know, the time spent in the dungeon and the monsters are coming in. You gotta run or die. Look, you're already limiting my health, my items. Let me have this. So, Dragon's Cave, this is the easy level. For floor one, now I showed you that each one of these uh, is a rule that you know, impacts your floor. Okay, so when you're on the first floor, you use this rule. When you're on the second floor, you use these two rules. And then when you're on the third floor, you use all three rules. Dragon's Cave, Hall of Statues, level one. Spend five time before your first turn on the floor. So right away, 
five cards out of the deck. Okay, well, then to start my turn, I have to spend two time. So I've already thrown away seven cards out of the deck. Great. Then I lay out four cards face down. Those are my dungeon rooms. Okay, cool. That's my whole turn because they're all closed. Uh, so my next turn, I discard two more turns just to take my turn. To encounter my first monster, I have already discarded nine cards. Oh, I don't like that mechanic. Uh, that is one of my biggest reasons for not liking the game. Um, I'll be honest. Some people like it, and that's fine. You are allowed to like that mechanic. You can agree with the creator of the game and say, that makes sense to me. Fine. I hate it. I, it is. Mm. Once you get past that, the game is actually kind of fun. Um, I like dice games. I'm a big fan of, like, Elder Sign. I like dice games. They're fun. This one, there's, there's some mitigation. Uh, if, if you're, if you're going to give me a dice game that's this challenging, you gotta let me mitigate to an extent. Like, you get all these different abilities, and I like that you can choose the abilities. Like I showed you in the gameplay, um, every monster can be used for different things. Uh, you can use it for experience. There's a lanterns at the top. You can use it to add a dice to your permanent dice pool. Cool. Uh, you can add a skill. Awesome. There are some that let you add a potion. Okay. I'm good with the mitigation. You are giving me abilities. Um, I will say one, my opinion of this game has increased recently. <clears throat> there is one rule that I have read this book many times. It is very easy to overlook. And that is the creation of hero dice. Hero dice are the black dice. They can be used for any color. So now say that you have a bunch of pink dice and you hit a test that requires blue dice. And you're like, well, I don't have the blue dice to, to make this test. Well, you roll all of your dice and then of your pink dice or any dice you're not using, you can take two and take the lowest of the two and make it black. Okay, that mitigates that. That, that is a, another that can be used as a blue. Cool, I just passed that test or at least contributed. Like maybe I didn't pass the test, but I at least didn't die. There is a lot to like in this game. Just because I don't personally care for it doesn't mean that this is a bad game by any stretch. Uh, there's a reason it's very popular, and I, I get it. It's just not for me. I love the artwork. I really do. That was why I got so excited about the artwork is bright and colorful where it needs to be and dark and spooky where it you know needs to be. The creatures kind of have like, some of them are like big and tough. Some of them are cute and adorable. I love the slime. I believe he's called a, an ooze, a glooping ooze. That's what it is. The glooping ooze is adorable. I'll kill you, but he's adorable. I really like, and as I may have, as you may have noticed when I showed you the components of the game, all of the player characters, your, you know, your archer, your rogue, your mage, your warrior, and your paladin are all female. There is not a male character in the game. I'm all right with that. I support that. That's cool. The game does have what is called a campaign mode. I am going to be 100% transparent and honest with you. I did not touch the campaign mode. I'm sorry. Maybe that makes me a bad reviewer because I didn't explore the whole game, but... It just wasn't really what I was looking for out of this game. So uh, I was just looking for a one shot that I can play uh, on my downtime at work or in a quick 20 minutes because I'm bored at home. I wasn't looking for a campaign experience. I've heard good things. If, if that appeals to you, cool. But I wanted to be 100% transparent. I did not explore that aspect of the game. So I'm not counting it in my review. The last thing that I want to discuss is uh, this has kind of been the big debate point with a lot of people on this game is the difficulty. Like I said, I don't know anybody that's beaten the dragon on the easy mode. This game is brutally hard um, to a point of not being fun. It's one of the biggest drawbacks of this game. It's one of the reasons I say it's, it's an okay game just not for me. Uh, I, I don't like that. I'd like to be able to beat a game. This one, uh, I'm reminded of a quote from Cleveland Brown from Family Guy. You don't win, 
you just do a little better each time. I don't know, if, if that's what you're into, great, cool. I'm not. I don't, I don't want a game that is so easy that I'll beat it every time. If I want that, I'll go play Flip City. Uh, or, at this point, Tiny Epic Galaxies. I want some level of challenge, I do. But not this level. I, I want here. This game is here. I want here. Not here, here. Not here. If that's what you're into, great. That's there's people that like that. They're like that that brutal, grueling, ah, oh, never win, but I always die, you know, give it my best. Cool. Um, not not me. Sorry. So, overall, it's a good game, just not for me. It's not my type of game. Um, and I can't even say that. It is my type of game, just there's just too many things holding it back between the time mechanic that I just despise and, and the brutal difficulty. They cancel out what would otherwise be a fantastic game, in my opinion. Good art, good components, uh, good good battle system. Those two things, though, they, they just kind of killed it for me. Uh, will I check out the expansion, Forest of Shadows? Maybe. Maybe it's better balanced. Uh, that's... I may not have liked this game, but I liked it enough to be curious to see if they can fix it in the next version. So maybe I will check it out. So once again, this has been One Deck Dungeon. Uh, if you agree, disagree, want to start a debate, leave a message down in the comments. Tell me what you think. And guys, don't forget, check out my website, thecrankyoldgamer.com. I do put all of my updates there. And any kind of news, things like that, please check it out. Check out my Instagram, thecrankyoldgamer. Give me a subscribe. And if you like what you see, uh, if you like the videos that I make and you want to help support, please consider donating to my Patreon. There's a link at the end of the credits, and you get your name in the credits. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. Once again, this has been... One Deck Dungeon. We'll see you later.